So do you have like a, a risk kind of matrix or like a series of questions that you ask yourself when you are going up against a risky decision that you kind of go, is it like, is it as simple as what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I was going to say. What's the worst case scenario here? What's like the worst thing that can possibly happen? Yeah. But then... And then also what's the reward? Like, like what's for the example, like scenario? a perfect yeah. example today, there was a photo, like we had a shoot last week, on Monday actually, and there was a photo that we just weren't quite sure about. We had like hundreds of incredible images from this shoot and we're like, you know what? We're not sure about it. Like, this image is going to make no difference to the business if we use it or not. The yeah. only thing that can happen is if we use it and it's taken badly, like it's a risk. Mm. And so like that image we like parked. Yeah. But then, um, you know, if it was like something like putting a boob down, the, a giant boob <laughs> down the Yarra River, we're like, okay, we think this is going to be really impactful. It like really gets our message across. That, like, yes, we're being censored by all these tech platforms. It's not good enough. We want the, you know, we want them to do better. We want to, you know, um, make it clear that like, it's just a boo. And yeah. so, like, for us, that was a risk worth taking. And yeah. so I think that's kind of how we yeah. how we broach it. Yeah, yeah I, I love it. Um, now, going back to kind of when you started and the, those building blocks, I know obviously you focus very heavily on brand and it's, it's super clear that, that that was a focus for you guys. But tactically speaking, when it comes to kind of getting the word out there, you know, you probably didn't have a huge amount of cash to invest in the activities that you were doing to get – the word out there like you probably couldn't invest in the giant boob up front Mm. so what did you do before the boob that helped build your community and kind of get the brand out there and 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 launching the business so to speak tactically well another shout out to grace (laughs) we love grace um we planned it's actually my favorite activation that we've done um this is the parking ticket one yeah the the g-strings on the car yeah so when we launched, you're 100% right. Like, no one knows who the fuck Nala is. Like, who's Nala? <laughs> like, also for a bra brand as well, like, you need so much trust in a brand Absolutely. that's going to create products that actually are good quality that support yeah. you. So we knew we had to, like, get the brand out there. And so what we did is planted G-strings on people's cars around Bondi with a little, like, handwritten note that said, hey, um, you left these at my place last night. XX Nala. <laughs> Love it. And we got a photographer there and we captured all this amazing content of people lifting up these G-strings being like, what the hell is yep. this? And then we got used that content to post in a lot of the local Facebook groups like Bondi, the Bondi local, whatever it's called, Bondi. Yeah, local, 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 local yeah. group. Yeah. yeah, And some other local groups. And these posts within those groups went viral with co- – hilarious comments like you almost caused a divorce between me oh my and my gosh, partner I love that. and things like that and so that was huge and then we yeah. like got media, media picked up on media that, picked like, up there was like a daily mail article about it mm-hmm. like bondi wakes up to g-strings on cars like Amazing. stuff like that and i think the other strategy that we we're able to like go with that really helped is like we're lucky that our cost of goods are relatively low yeah and our values as a brand align with a lot of influencers so when we mm. first launched we were able to send out a lot of product get it in people's hands yep i think Honestly, the first time I like, kind of felt like we were onto something was when like we were sending stuff to influencers and then we'd see, because at the time we were getting like, you know, 20 orders a day maybe. Mm. And then all of a sudden we'd see that influence like order their own product oh. and we'd be like, okay, like we're onto something here. But yeah. like having um, products and values as a brand that align with those people, they're really happy to talk about it um, for, yeah. you know, low investment from our part. And that yeah. got the word out there initially and built a lot of momentum with that launch campaign mm. that Chloe, Chloe discussed. And I think that got us got us going. I think that. Yeah, I think, for low cost. Yeah, I think that's a really important thing to flat. Like, I have an econ business as well, um, and it's a, a, again going back to like the behavioural psychology side of things. You know, there's this concept that you know, if I put a teacup in front of you and I say you can't touch it, you just look at it. How much do you think it's worth? Most people sit around the like fifteen to twenty dollar mark, right, mm-hmm. from that that study. If I then say to that same group of people, okay, now pick it up play with it, touch it, interact with it, feel it. Now tell me how much you think it is. And people almost double the value once they can touch it, right? And I think that it's the same thing and it's like unless people, especially with underwear, like unless people can like feel it and try it and like wear it, there's this hesitancy to actually invest in something like that because they're like, well, what I've got at the moment is okay and the risk for me to change it and not like it is too high. And it's the same as, you know, our product, which is a, you know, crispy chili oil business. Um, people, once they try it, 
become super fans. Hey, just a quick one. If you are loving this episode, help us grow and reach more people by hitting the subscribe button and leaving a review. And so we've then started working with restaurants and cafes to get it on the menu as opposed to just becoming a stockist Mm. because once people try it, they're like, of course I'm going to buy a jar and then they keep buying a jar. So I think you guys did something really important there where you kind of put the product in people's hands, which was a low cost investment from your point of view. But then that experience and that tangible interaction with the brand then allowed this like super fan base to kind of grow. And then, you know, when I love something, I tell my friend about it. And that's just kind of naturally how um, it it kind of builds. Now you have a loyal, you know, community and it's kind of, it's still growing and it will continue to grow. Um, This loyal community and this loyal following you know, what's the secret do you think? You know, you've got a Pilates business, you've built a community from very early on and then that's kind of translated over to, to Nala now. Is there any elements that you've both learned that you're like this is fundamental for building a community? Yeah, we were actually just talking about this on the way here. We Love think it. there's like two parts to it. Mm-hmm. One is creating a product that people really feel passionate about, yep. which has been huge for us. And then the second part is having a brand with values that align with yours. So for us, we were really, we had really strong values from the outset of building Nala and we've really stuck to those and we try and really embed those values within different elements of the business. And we always come back to them as a team as well. And I think those things are critical for building a community. But I will say I never imagined the Nala community to be, to grow into what it is now. It's I love that. What surprised you the most about the community that you've got today? This is a genuine community. Like I used to, <laughs> genuine. It's like, like, I, I used to think yeah. like, I, I used to like, I remember before Nala, I like, hear brands, oh, we've built this community and I kind of like, <laughs> like want to like vomit. I like, like, vomit so, my mouth like, a little so bit. It's so lame. You know? like, communi- it's also like such an overused word. Yeah, like, it's a buzzword. Well, yeah. 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 But it's true. And we see it. Sometimes we laugh. We, we have like social meetings where we go through, yeah. we go through the content and we go through the week and the engagement and everything. Like, so, say we put up a photo that's something like a bit controversial, a bit out there, mm. and a comment will come in that's a bit negative about it. We don't have to. We don't have to do anything. We'll just like sit back I and like that. the Nala like fans, yep. like the stands yep. will like get in there and just like literally just fight for us. And we just step like, like we'll sit back and be like, how did this happen? But yeah. it's the coolest thing ever. They yeah. just they get it. Like they drink the Kool Aid. <laughs> they yep. they love the values and they're happy to stand up for Nala. Yeah. Like it's it's pretty cool. It's amazing. Now, I have a question because we haven't quite touched on it. Nala, the name, yeah. where did it come from? This is a heartbreaking story. <laughs> no, it's oh, a, no, 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 that's a bit dramatic. <laughs> yes, okay. No, that's a, your that's face a good is like, hook. Who died? <laughs> that's a good hook. I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, I've asked Marketing the wrong brain and hook. Yeah. Um, basically, we originally had called the brand Jungle, okay. um, and we'd done all our branding, like, had really invested in tone of voice, like, in our vi- like visual identity. <laughs> Um, it's a jungle out there. Yeah, it's a jungle out there. All, all those kind of things. How good is that? Um, I know. I'm still a bit gutted. And we'd like, <laughs> but before we'd like sort of invested in like developing the brand, we'd um, got yeah. advice from lawyers like, yep, you're going to be okay trademark wise. Submitted our trademark application, got rejected, appealed, got rejected again. And like it was at the point where like we had to like put our brand on the labels mm-hmm. of our products in like the next couple of weeks and had to make a, like a quick pivot. And for like two weeks, we like racked our brains trying to find up like come up with any name that worked it's hard it was really hard yeah, and then so eventually hard. someone I, I can't we always kind of not can't quite remember who came up with it i thought it was you yeah i don't know <laughs> um and um yeah came, we came up with nala and it just felt so right and mm. we actually now it is nala like yeah. it just it, yeah it works yeah, yeah. and we I, honestly i prefer it to jungle prefer although it. jungle is still great like yeah yeah, yeah. r.i.p yeah. R.I.P. to Jungles. There's, no, a, there's a brand called Jungles Jungles and that, that was the – like they didn't specifically – like but the like sort of government said, oh, it was too close to that. And I, when I ever see their ads like flash up on my like Insta, Insta I'm like – Honestly, <laughs> it's the same as me like when I came up – like I wanted a name that res- like had a story. Yeah. Right? But I'm like I also didn't want something that was just like bang or like just a mm. short like meaningless word. Um and me and my graphic designer who we're doing an episode with, um, we were like, right, like put our heads together and we're like, 
coming up with names. We landed on this name and we loved it. We were like lemonade. The whole idea of like when life gives you lemons, like we'll give you lemonade. I love that. Okay. Um, when you only have, you know, a certain amount of cash, we'll make the best lemonade that we can out of out of that. And went to go register it and this woman in Adelaide had registered it like three months before me and I was like, fuck. Oh. Um, but it's the same, right? And then we, we landed on Gambit, which there's a, there's a whole story behind it, but I think um, now it just seems like it, it wouldn't be called anything else mm. now that you've kind of been doing yeah, it for it such a long own, period of time. It like takes on its own persona. Absolutely. Like Nala is a beast. It's its yeah. own human. What does Nala <laughs> look like if Nala was a person? <laughs> Oh, that's a good question. We did that very early on, didn't we? On yeah. Brand. I, I don't think there's like a person. I, I just visualise I I yeah. Nala from The Lion King. <laughs> hey, honestly, it's where my head goes Queen to. of the jungle. So Queen of the jungle. One of our um, developers um, recently, she's really oh, into yeah. anime um, <laughs> and she brought up this anime character. I'm going to forget her name. And she's like, I've got no idea Nala, is, Nala is this person because she's like fierce and sexy and confident. confident and rah, rah, yeah, so maybe it's this anime I character. I need to find, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, we'll have to find it. Yeah. 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 We'll layer it over the, the little <laughs> yeah. social cuts. No, I love that. Now, um, you obviously, the, it, it goes without saying when you look at your site or your socials or anything like that, you're extremely inclusive. You're diverse, you know, range of models you know, colours, you know, ethnicities, sizes, bus sizes, hip sizes, genders, like Mm -hmm. binary, non-binary, you focus very much on the entire spectrum of anybody that would want to wear your underwear. Mm -hmm. How important is it, you know, last 10 years that I've spent in advertising and marketing agencies, you see a lot of businesses and brands that tick the boxes when it comes to sustainability, diversity, inclusivity. Um, How important is it for you guys to collaborate with people that know what they're doing when it comes to kind of sustainability or a kind of expert in that, that field when it comes to sustainability, diversity and inclusivity. Yeah, it's huge. Um, when we when we set out with Nala, we had our sort of our ethical guidelines, our non-negotiables. Yeah. We didn't want to just tick a box. We didn't want to just say like, okay, yeah, we'll use a fabric that is like mostly sustainable or, or like has like 10% recycled yeah. ingredients, but the rest will be like whatever. I, yeah. I don't know. And you can very easily do that. Like I yeah. feel like no one really looks into it. No. But we didn't want to do that. We didn't just want to tick a box. So we did a lot of research into sustainability, mm-hmm. but then also when it comes to our gender neutral products, mm-hmm. we didn't know much at all no. about it. Yeah. So we worked with the Equality Project, who are an amazing organisation in Australia. They do a lot of training They go into businesses and different organisations and do trainings around how to create more inclusive spaces for the LGBTQIA plus community. And they came in and did a training for us and after we were like, hey, would you actually help us connect us with people or help us try and develop these products? And they connected us with some amazing trans women who were instrumental in us developing these products and this range. So that was huge for us and... It was a big challenge yeah. to develop these products. Um, it took a long time, mm. but we knew that we wanted to do more than just say, okay, here's here's a product that we've designed on and tested on mm. women but can be worn by anyone, of course, and yeah. we won't call it women's underwear because it can be worn on anyone, but the reality mm. is it's going to fit differently on different bodies. On it. It's going to fit differently on a cis woman to a trans yeah. woman. So... We wanted to make sure those products were specifically catering to each person's individual needs and that really enabled us to do that. Mm. When it came to sustainability, we... They were probably some of our most, like, the products that went through the most test wearing, um, like, rounds. Like, we just, like, we were doing things, like, not many, like, had been done, but, like, not in Australia and, like, very few brands had done it and, like, the the quality of products were, like, okay. And we just did round after round because we, like, couldn't get it right. Eventually we got it to a point that we were really Mm. proud of and... um, yeah, I think the community is really proud of it because they can see, okay, like they've actually tried to create a product yeah. that works for me. They're not just talking about me or pretending that they care, like they actually care. Um, mm. And, yeah, I think that was important. We've also seen, since we've launched even, a lot of brands that try, have tried, but haven't really committed 100%. Yeah. And they get torn apart. Of course. So... I don't know. We're really proud of that part of the business. Yeah, it's kind of like it's an all or nothing approach, right? Yeah. Like I feel like, again, like if you dabble in it, 
you'll be found out straight away. Exactly. It's not good enough anymore. No. And yeah. I mean, I think it's the same, like, even in uh, in our industry, you know, you have workplaces that are like, we're inclusive, like, you know, we're a people's brand, like, we're a people's agency, blah, blah, blah. Then you get in there, you'd spend two weeks in there and you're like, you don't give a fuck about these people. Yeah. <laughs> like, literally. And I think it's, it becomes really obvious when you say one thing and your actions don't match to that or the products that you develop yeah. don't match that and it's quite evident that you guys have done the work and it is harder like it is harder to do it yeah but it pays off because that's the audience that you're serving and I think it comes back to that concept of you know if you stand for for nothing you'll fall for anything and it's the same right like if you guys don't have a brand that you sit there and you're like no we need to invest our time energy and money into making this sustainable inclusive accessible and diverse versus doing it half-assed and then letting down the community that you were set up to serve. 100%. Nailed it. (laughs) Hey, guys, if you are listening on Spotify, don't forget to leave us a five-star rating. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the Q&A function on Spotify. I'm really interested and I think we spoke about it briefly before we started filming. You two are obviously married. We are. And you work together. And you have, a very different <laughs> set. you have a very different skill sets. Now, I have a business, my chili boy, uh, spicy boy um, business is with my ex. We still run together. People are very confused that we still get along and we have a great relationship. <laughs> but we get it works because I know where my role plays in the business. Mm-hmm. He knows where his role plays in the business and they're not the same. So what advice do you have for somebody that might be in – you know, business with their partner or their friend or a family member. Is there stuff that you've learned that you're like, God, we wouldn't do that again? Or is there stuff that you're like, this is what makes this relationship work? I think <laughs> you're like, no, I, I could, honestly, I could talk about this for so long. I love working with Chloe. I think it's been like it's been great. Um, How much did you get paid to say? That? No, <laughs> um, no, I, I really do. Like, it's like be nice. Be nice. <laughs> I don't, we we got asked, asked like. Not the same question, but like as so, no, it was me. You weren't there. Like someone was interviewing me and asked, like, "What's it? So, what's it like working with your husband?" And I hadn't prepared for it, and I just, I was like, "You threw me under the bus." I completely <laughs> threw you under the bus. And then afterwards, I was like, I was like, I don't know. Maybe it was just a sort of hard morning or something. I was just, I was being a bit dramatic and over the top. Yeah. Um. And afterwards, I was like. I didn't even say I love working with you, which I do. I promise. <laughs> I promise. But it's interesting. But we've gotten way better at it. I think How like, long has it been you long? asked what like what like would you do or what advice would you give? I think the best thing that we've done is put yeah, some like really boundaries. strong rules mm. and boundaries in place. Yeah. And like the 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 number one one that we have um, for each other is like if it's outside of work hours um, and we're like you know sitting around the table having breakfast or lying in bed watching a movie or whatever and something pops in one of our minds like which happens all the time right um rather than just like blurting it out like we've always got to ask the other person like is it all right to talk about work now and so i love you know, that 75 you know, of the time chloe will say no 75 mm. <laughs> of the time i'll say yes yeah. <laughs> i think you say yes I'm all the time think of like a time that you said no <laughs> yeah. happy to always go there i'm always like no I'm not now laugh. I yeah. don't want to get into it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that's like allowed us to like make sure that when we're having conversations, um, we are having them in a healthy environment. Of and course. I think that sets us up for a healthy we're relationship. Also, we're <laughs> also like we're we're pretty good at like if we're at home at the end of a day, we're okay at switching off usually, unless it's a really intense time. We actually don't want to sit around and talk about work. Like when you spend all day together mm. and it's just work, 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 we don't want to I don't know, neither of us really want to go home and just, like, continue. We want to just, you know. Historically, like, my work's probably been a bit more intense than Chloe's and I used oh, to yeah. come home from my day yeah. of work and, like, Chloe would be like, so tell me about your day. I'm like, the last thing I want to do talk is yeah. talk about it. And yeah. now she finally gets it. It used to drive her yeah. nuts. She'd be like, tell me what you did. Like, like, I'd, like she'd have to, like, draw it out of me and yeah. now it's like she doesn't want to know. <laughs> well, especially now when... I know too much. Now she <laughs> yeah. just talks really loud on, on calls and meetings. I'm yeah. like, can you just shh? Shh, I'm trying to chill. Yeah, no, I get it, right? Like it was the same as my ex and I. Like when we were living together, we had this rule where, you know, he worked in the hospitality industry. I, you know, run my business. And we were like when I was working from home a lot. So I would have this feeling of like when he got home, I was like, hey, how was your day? I've literally not spoken to anybody, like other than the people through my screen. My only interaction has been like me going out to get coffee or pick up my dry cleaning. And so when he got home, I was like, a person, like I'm excited to see you. Tell me about your day. 
And so we actually ended up having this conversation because otherwise he'd get home, we'd get straight into like the spicy boy chat and like what's mm. happening with this brand now that you finished your job here. And we were like, no, we both have like an hour of like decompressing. When you get home, yeah. it's like a, hey, hey, there's no like, how was your day? And it was like, we give each other the hour. He might go out for a surf. I might continue working. And then after that hour, it's like, okay, you've kind of had a bit of your time yeah. and then you come back together. Is there anything you do differently when it comes to working together? Looking back now at the last few years? I think we've got it pretty good. Like we, we, to be honest, I think we had one argument about work in the first few weeks um, and we haven't really had an argument about work. I do want to say like, like, working we, with, yeah. like working with you, it's nice. The, the amazing thing about it is – like I trust you more than anyone else in the whole world. Of so course. like it's nice to be in business with someone that you literally trust with your life yeah. wholeheartedly, no questions. That's like a nice, a really nice thing. Whereas if you have a co-founder like that isn't someone that you're married to or yeah. related to or that you love, then the trust wouldn't be there as much. So that's like a real positive. positive. And also I've been able like for me I'm – pregnant yes. but like earlier in the pregnancy was really hard for me yeah. I was really sick and to work with someone who's your co-founder who gets that more than anyone else yeah Phil could pick up the slack for me and like yeah. help me out and yeah without me feeling guilty yeah. about it whereas if it was a co-founder that was just a co-founder yeah. that would be really hard I think we've also been lucky that like touch wood for the first 18 months that we've been in market like the business has really gone from strength yeah. to strength. Mm. And, like, I think the real challenges will come for us when things aren't going so well and that will happen eventually. Of like, course. it's not going to be perfect forever. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, I think that will be probably the next test for us working together of, like, how do we manage when things are harder and ch more challenging. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure we'll be fine. Um, but, like, we've been <laughs> blessed to net to now that, like, for the most part it's all been yeah. happy days. Too yeah. blessed to be stressed. <laughs> I love it. Wow. Still definitely stressed. Sounds so crazy. <laughs> yeah, Life's somewhat blessed. A breeze. I love it. <laughs> Let's go with that. Yeah. Um, now before we get into, you know, what's what's coming, what's, what's happening in, in Nala's future, um, what trends are you guys seeing? I think one of the – the things that I love about the variety of industries that we work with, we work from everyone from banks and insurance companies all the way through to like cosmetic injectors and tiny startups and everything in between. And what I love is that there's so many trends that you can see happening in one industry that you know will come and hit that other industry, but they're probably not even thinking about it because they're so engrossed in their own kind of lane or, or industry. What are some kind of trends that you see kind of round the corner when it comes to underwear and, and, and fashion, even though you've only spent the last two and a half, three years in, in, in that kind of space? We, um, <laughs> when, we, when we were talking about this question yeah. before the interview and to be honest, we didn't have a good answer. Love it. And <laughs> part of the reason is because like I think neither of us like have been immersed in this industry for our whole careers and yeah. I wouldn't say that like – we grew up thinking, oh, we're going to run a fashion business one day. Oh, yeah. And so what that's actually created is us to probably look at things really objectively and like we yeah. probably, this is going to sound a bit lame, but like don't pay that much attention to the trends because we're like, okay, we think this would be good. We're hearing this from our customers and like become very customer focused opposed to like trend focused, if that makes sense. Yep. And so, yeah, I don't know if we've like got some trend up on our whiteboard being like, oh, we've got to get on that trend. Otherwise we're going to miss out. I think it's more about just, the way we kind of yeah. think about product development is like our customers keep asking for this, yeah. let's make it. And so that's literally, that's how, we literally how we do it. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's the best way to do it. Like I always say like when we have clients that are like, oh, my competitor's doing this, I'm like stop looking at what they're doing because yeah. if you're focusing on your competitor and your competitor is focusing on your customer, you're always going to be one step behind. Yeah. And in our industry it takes 12 months to develop anything anyway, right? So like let's <laughs> say someone's coming out with some trendy whatever, like by the time you get to market, too late. You're too like, late. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you have to focus on your customer yeah. and what they want. Yeah. With that in mind, then what are they asking for? What are the, what are you going to give the people in the next six to twelve months? So we have a big other release. than a baby, other than a baby, a little <laughs> Nala baby, a little Nala baby, yeah. Nala Junior Nala is coming, of course. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have one of our we have our biggest release, product release, and collection release since we launched Nala, coming up in the middle of the year. And we're very excited about it. This has been something that has also been 
a huge request from a lot of our customers. Mm -hmm. We've been hearing we want most of the request is for cotton underwear. Yep. Breathable cotton underwear. When we looked into it, cotton isn't very sustainable. Yep. It takes a lot of water to produce. Okay. You can get recycled cottons, but we didn't really think that was sort of good enough. We spent like a year trying to find a new fabric and we're coming out with a new collection called Better Than Cotton in July, which is very exciting. We like saw the... And it's <laughs> going to be better than cotton. It's going to be better than cotton. It's better like, than cotton. <laughs> we, um, we saw our pre-production samples yesterday actually and like everyone was just like touching them and it's like I the yummiest stop. fabric. You know, like, I feel like a bit <laughs> creepy when I'm like touching the fabric because yeah. I just like sit there. I'm just like this is the best thing in the whole world. Amazing. <laughs> but I'm like you have to be obsessed with it, right? Yeah, yeah. We yeah, so we ser- we wanted to search for something that was could st- more than just like tick a box, Love. say like this is recycled. Yeah. But the, the fabric is a modal. It uses ten to twenty times less water to produce than cotton, but super moisture wicking, softest thing you'll ever feel. Like yummy, you just want to like wear yeah. it all the time. Made from beech tree. I always get this cellulose. Like, cellulose. <laughs> yeah, it comes from beech trees. It's a comfy range of soft, yummy underwear that you just want to wear every day, but it still has that Nala edge. It still feels cool. It's not Nana and these. We love Nanas as we well. Nanas. They're, they're, Nanas buy our products. Your, your Nana wears our products. I love that. Don't worry for saying that on mic, but she would listen. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So when, so middle of the year, we have a date, TBC, End of, of July. End, end of end July. End of July, it's yeah. coming out. We've got new products okay. within the range and it's a whole new collection of products that I'm just going to wear on repeat. Amazing. And if people haven't bought or worn Nala before this collection, why should they buy this collection? Well, it is, it is a collection designed for comfort but also super supportive. Mm-hmm. It follows the same ethics that our the rest of our collection follows we cater for a range of sizes cup sizes from a to oh no what is our new one go to h i think not sure oh no (laughs) h ish h ish sorry i forgot um to h cups and then also up to a 6xl in our briefs it is beautiful and comfortable but when you put it on it's going to make you feel sexy and confident and amazing Honestly, the, the reaction everyone has when they put it on for the first time is like, this is the most comfortable thing I've ever put on my body. Yeah. And so like that is what we're going for with this range. And so um, if we can achieve that, then we'll have some more happy customers. I can't wait to release it as well. Yeah. I really can't. Well, this episode will come out just before you release it. Great. Yeah. So <laughs> if you do want to shop it, we're going to include the link in the show notes as to where you can get it from. And a sneaky um, discount code. And there'll be a discount code. Stop it. What's the discount code? You said you were going to make it up on the spot. No, no, no. <laughs> um, we can make one up. Come on. <laughs> no, no, no. You're stressing me out. <laughs> Better than cotton 15. You get 15% oh, there off. Go. There you go. Better than <laughs> cotton 15. I love it. Um, we'll p- include that in the show notes as well. Um, now, before we wrap up, I always have some quick fire questions that we ask every single one of our guests um, and you can both answer. Um, they don't have to be quick, but they're just kind of, quick fire in terms of the nature of them. What is one brand that comes to mind for both of you? I'll go uh, Nike. Mm-hmm. I'm a sport, uh, sports loving guy. So it's a bit cliche, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, I just think their storytelling um, and the brand that they've created is like second to none. And um, even though such a different industry, such a different customer um, often take such inspiration yep. of things that they do. Love it. I'll go Ganny. Ganny. So cool, but yeah. also just doing the cool stuff in the sustainability world as well. Yeah, I, think I they're love really that. like creating. Oh, what am I trying to say? Can you can you can you edit this? Up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. I feel like they're doing new and innovative things that have not been done before in the yeah. industry. Pregnancy brain. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's fine. But I'm not pregnant, and I think like that ninety percent of the time. So you're good. Um, <laughs> Outside of Nala, obviously, they're the two brands that, that, yeah. that come to your top of mind. Now, what is one thing that you think that helps keep a brand top of mind in your own experience but also, you know, when you think of a brand like you did just then, mm-hmm. what is the one thing that helps keep that brand top of mind for you? I think newness. Yeah. Newness and innovation. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't just have to be with product, right? Yeah. Like I think just constantly 
doing new high quality cool things i think mm. keeps brands top of mind and so yeah. we sort of look at our marketing calendar for the next 12 months all the time mm. and yeah sh- sure some of it's new products better than cotton or we're doing maternity later in the year like wh- whatever it is but like in those times where it's not new product okay mm. what other things can you be doing yeah. that are like going to get your message across and and make your engage your community and so we're constantly trying to come up with those ideas as well i love that last but not least because I'm obsessed with quotes and I have them everywhere, um, one of the jokes that my friends have said over the years is that I should have a coffee book table that has full of all the quotes that I've shared over time. Um, and I really want to do that, but I want to include everybody else's quotes in it that I interview. Um, what is a quote that's top of mind for you or something that you guys have kind of, you know, reminded yourself of? It doesn't have to be super, like, impactful or full of wisdom or anything like that, but just something that, you know is top of mind for you guys throughout this this journey of building your business. I'm going to go back to what we said before. You've got to risk it to get the biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. You need to say the one you were saying nonstop a couple of weeks ago. What was it? The branch and you kept getting it wrong. The low hanging, the branch and the tree. I can't, I can't even remember. Oh. oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. Something about a branch. <laughs> um, I think like it's similar to clothes, but like I think the approach that like just being all in, um, yeah. yeah. I think like we've taken that approach to Nala. Like we really went from it for the start, from the start, and every day we're sort of still all in. And I think that that's been a huge driver of where we've got to so far. So yeah, I love it. No risk, no story. Yeah, and exactly. you certainly wouldn't have a story if you didn't take the risk. Um, thank you so much for sitting with me today. I've loved getting to understand your backgrounds and and kind of how the brand has grown into. The, the beast that it is today and I think it will continue to grow because of how ingrained you guys are in the values that you set out for yourselves from day one. I can't wait to interview you guys again in like three years time and see where the business is um, from there but thank you so much for spending time with me today. Thank Thanks you it's been great. Us. Appreciate it. Before you go, help us grow and reach more people by hitting the subscribe button and leaving us a review. You can also follow us on Instagram and TikTok at topofmind.pod.